So you can take a really simple rhythmical pattern such as which I'll break down for you, it's actually like super simple, and then add a few notes to it. And get that. YouTubers, got a super busy day today, but I wanna fit something in for you guys because we've got a ton of cool stuff going on. We've got uh, Rufus Philpot, the amazing Rufus Philpot in the studio with us in Brooklyn today. <laughs> Um, I'm going to be showing you clips behind the scenes. He's going to be showing you his Moulin bass, which is orange, my favourite ever colour. And uh, seriously, it's a really nice jazz bass. And we'll, we'll, we'll look at that in this video. But I also want to show you some really cool slap hacks as well. Um, stuff that really moved the needle for me in terms of getting my slapping together kind of and I wanted to do that because we've got a we just released today actually we're release, releasing a brand new course into the course library over at Scott's Bass Lessons membership so scottsbasslessons.com the academy uh, we're releasing a brand new two hour course into into the uh, into the course library over there by the uh, by our very own Phil Mann. Super excited about it. So just as a, a little little vibe off the slap thing, I thought I'd give you guys some super cool slap hacks while we're at it. Anyway, let's get into today, and then we'll uh, we'll get the bass out and, and get some slappage on. Slappage. Halfway through the day, recording's going well. Time to break for lunch. This building's great. Look at that. The studio is in a, uh, I suppose it's, they're just lofts, it's like a ton of lofts and people have converted them into uh, all different kinds of studios and art studios and performance spaces and wicked place. <laughs> Tune, yeah, 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 yeah. Tell me about this bass that you're going to uh, oh, you know, yeah. donate to uh, the Divine Family. Can I play a bit of it too? So you can, you it can play it a bit, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, this is... Uh... So this is my new uh, Moulin it's J bass. It's Moulin, isn't it? Yeah. And it's the, it's the Rufus, it's the RP. This is the RP. RP. And it's the it's the racing Rufus stripe. They've never done the racing stripe before. <laughs> and is it true that that stripe makes you play five percent faster? I think it's seven point seven. Oh, it's seven point five. Conversion. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And you know, we really just I have another moon on that I've used. Actually, you've probably seen me with that one, the red one. This is a little different because it's got the seventy style saddles. You know, yeah. The bridge. And I'm not sure about that. I think the pickup spacing might still be 60s though, but the bridge is 70s. And we added the binding too. And I'm not sure, but I always have a feeling that the ones with binding, like the 70s ones, sound different. To the you 60s. were saying that earlier, right. yeah, yeah. I don't know, but this one to me. I don't know, man. It's just. It like has that thing. vibe. It's got a real edge, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Open the tone control. Ooh. You know what I mean? It's got a lot of edge to it, right? Yeah, you yeah. open it right up and it's, it's real. You know, it's got a lot of life to the sound. Yeah, so, yeah. I don't know, I really like it. It's pretty light. You know, I guess it's like eight pounds or something. And you've had a few Moulins before, haven't you? I've got five, six five. key bases. Again. That is another example of why you should be, you know, donating that donating to the, to the, to the, the uh, divine. Uh, <laughs> 
Good. It sounds really passive, that instrument. Right? Just, it's yeah. super, just all going. Right? See what I mean? It's so good. So I'm kind of really liking it, and it's not as easy to play as some basses. You know, I always find jazz basses are they're harder to play than like some boutique stuff. Yeah, right? boutique stuff, yeah. And, yeah. But it, <laughs> it's the stuff we were talking about in the course about phrasing melodically and thinking about stuff. It forces you to kind of commit to what you're going to play more because you can't waffle on it so much. You know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You don't mean that phrase, it's not going to come out very well. I live in LA, but I've flown over to New York and uh, we're out here in, in deepest Brooklyn and we're, we're filming some uh, interesting video stuff. I, I wanted to um, talk about something that was an extension of a seminar I did a little while ago. And it's about phrasing and, and, and melodic concepts and improvising. And it's a very hard topic to cover, but I really wanted to dive in because I think it short changes students when, when a teacher says, well, you can't teach phrasing, you can't teach. So, so well, you can give people an idea of springboard. So we looked at some phrases, uh, we looked at some ideas from Pat Matheny, um, from Charlie Parker, from Jacob Astorius, and, I, and I, I showed students, hopefully over the course of like six or seven little modules, how they can take those and use those over different chords, how to play them <coughs> so that we're playing, you know, we're phrasing like a, more like a horn player. We're thinking about note length, uh, attack, note choice as well. All these things which, they're kind of like topics that you know, like with the YouTube kind of generation, there's a lot of stuff just based on speed, right? Yeah, yeah. And just the sort of the flash on top. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But, but trying to get a little deeper and going, okay, well, this is a really cool line, but why is it cool? Well, it's because it uses these notes in the line, which is no mystery. It's not something like some magical formula. Yeah. It, it's very simple, actually, when you break it down all the time. Most of the stuff that sounds great is because of the note choice, Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. It's not yeah, some yeah. strange ethereal scale that certain guys <laughs> are blessed with knowing, right? It's like, but you're starting to hear... It's like the magic circle. Yeah, there's, no, there's nothing about that, but people will sometimes try and hide that knowledge, yeah, which yeah, kind of drives yeah. me nuts. So, I feel that it's much better to teach people real music. I, I As I talk about in the course, and, and the students are going to see, I think work on music that is technically challenging, and your um, technique... Reverse engineer from that. Yeah, yeah, your technique's going to keep up. If you're playing a great line by Charlie Parker and you can't quite get to slow it down until you can play it, and gradually increase the tempo and wow your technique gets better and you learn a charlie parker line yeah yeah it's yeah pretty cool. yeah yeah two for the price of one yeah so i want to give you guys four four cool slap hacks that have served me really well the first one i've got to say is the movement of the slapping hand so whether you're right hand or left hand it's the one that you're beating the bass with right the movement of this for me is really important it's something that i really struggled with when i got started because i couldn't get that that snappy sound Right, and what I found is it's a lot to do with the actual movement of the arm when you're doing it, right? So, what I'm doing there is I'm rotating the, the forearm. So it's kind of like, you know when you grab a door handle, a doorknob, and you turn your arm? It's that movement. It's that movement. And you can even practice that movement by flipping your bass over. And just doing that. It's actually a really cool technique. So flip your bass over, right? Hand out wide. And what you want to be doing is, first of all, just, just making sure you've got that rotation of the arm there. And you're striking the body of the bass. But then you can start adding the slapping as well from the fingers. <laughs> it's a really, I know it sounds weird, but you could literally do it in a bit of wood. It's just getting the movement before you really get into the the notes or anything like that. Just get into the movement that you're going to need to. To, to use to get that slap, that real snappy slap sound, right? So that's the first 
first hack, first exercise I want to give you guys. And that's great if you're a beginner as well, just getting used to that movement because you can practice it without having to worry about the notes. Now the next one is where you strike the string with your thumb. You've got to, for me, you've really got to go, it's got to be over this kind of area. I see a lot of guys like slapping down here. You're not going to get that. Let me just turn this up a bit in a tiny, tiny little practice amp. That better? Um, for me, you've got to be striking around this area so you get the strings hitting the end of the fingerboard. Okay, the, even when you when you're popping like that. You know you you're getting that ah, ah, you're getting that because it's hitting the top frets. It's bouncing off and then when you thump it Again, it's getting that, you're, you're thumping it off that top fret. So make sure, once you've got that movement down, that you're also hitting the strike of the string in the right place, okay, round here. Okay, so the next hack, guys, is, is my realization that the percussive element of the fretting hand is as important as the percussive element of the, the thumping hand. So with this hand, you've got the... You know, you've got this going on, but this hand, when you see a lot of the great slap guys playing, you'll see that this hand is also doing a lot of the work when it becomes, when it comes to the percussive elements of what's going on. Um, a really simple pattern you can start to use to get this down is a four note pattern, okay? And it's just thumb, slap, thumb, pluck, okay? Thumb, slap, thumb, pluck. And you can use it for like... Again, slow it down, thumb, slap, thumb, pluck. And what I'm doing there is the first note is an open E, then you slap on with your with the fretting hand, and then you keep that down so it's muted, and then a thumb pluck. Say while I'm doing it. Thumb, slap, thumb, pluck. Thumb, slap, thumb, pluck. Thumb, slam. But that slap is with the left hand. And there's another really cool pattern that's really similar to that. It's just an eight note pattern. Eight note pattern. It's just an eight note pattern. It's just an eight note. It's just an eight note pattern. Sorry. <laughs> Hi, it's an eight note pan. And just do it like that to start with and then we're gonna link it up, right? So thumb, slap, thumb, pop, thumb, pop, thumb, slap. Now the next really cool thing that I discovered is that you can use your middle finger as well in conjunction with the pop, right? So we've got the, the thumb, we've got the pop, we've got the left hand slap, okay? If we, we play that original four, four note grouping pattern. <coughs> you can also use your second finger So what I'm doing, so it turns into like a triplet thing. The first guy I heard using this is Elaine Karen, but I think he was using the double thumb, where he's actually playing up. 
I didn't even know that happened because when I learned bass, it was before YouTube, it was before, it was like cassette players and you know, it was before, was it before DVDs? I th yeah, it was before DVDs, like things like on VHS when I learned, right? So, and I could like watch like one bass video every year or something because nobody could get any videos. <laughs> Um, so, so I didn't know that there was a, like double thumbing or anything like that happening. So when I heard it, I just thought, oh, he's using his second finger. Okay, so all I'm doing there is the same pattern, same pattern, right? Thumb, slap. Slap, thumb, pop, pop. That's all it is. Thumb, slap, thumb, pop, pop. So you get these two pops on the top. And I'm doing that from the D and the G string. And then you can, by doing that, you can just add in notes as well. So you can go sort of like thumb, hammer, slap. And you can get lines like um, that's where I've got I've done that in a few videos and people have been like wow what's that that's all it is So that's like the percussive version of it. Add in the notes. <laughs> okay. I know it sounds crazy, but once you get that movement into your... It's just getting that, that, that index and middle. So to get that down, again, just do that four note pattern. Yeah, so I'm starting off thumb, slap, thumb, pop. Just doing that round and round. That's the original one. Then start adding that middle finger in. Then the notes. Just to recap, we've gone through four things today. I've gone through the rotation of the arm and now you can do that. Just to, you know, get that speed down. Um, I've gone through where you're supposed to be striking on the actual fingerboard, making, make sure that you're striking around this area to get that, to get that, you know, that real, um, well, that sound, right? Um, we also looked at the, the groupings, right, so groupings of four and, and getting this hand into play. Because that for me, it's that left hand is as, is as important as the, uh, or the fretting hand is important percussively as the, the, this right hand. Then we looked at doubling up that pattern. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, and then we looked at getting this middle finger into the game as well. So we started with the four note pattern. But then we started. Add notes in. And I've got no idea if we did anything else. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this video, guys. Thank you for the ridiculous amount of support. 
you guys are giving us um, over the last few videos. The view numbers have gone through the roof. Um, huge love to the entire base community for everything you do. And, uh, and yeah, that's it. And if you're into this slap thing, go check out the membership at scottsbaselessons.com. We've just released a two hour course um, called Slap Base Fundamentals for anybody that's wanting to really get into slap, you know, that beginner to intermediate level. It's over two hours long, obviously all fancy video, not like this kind of vibe. It's all uh, in the studio at SBR Towers. And, um, and it's our very own Phil Mann who is way better at uh, this slap stuff than me. So hopefully you'll go check it out, scottspacesessons.com. And other than that, take it easy. Um, I'm trying to remember who we've got in the studio next for you because obviously we're doing these vlogs. Who's coming in next? Damien Erskine's in next. Obviously we're here in Brooklyn, doing the thing. Um, look out for the next vlog. Damien Erskine's gonna be in it. We're gonna be doing a whole load of cool stuff. So other than that guys, take it easy and I'll see you in the shed. Bye. Another one, but you know, I don't need to have it. I know you guys wish get out. Amazing records. Boom. Boom. That is some funky ass bass playing. What's the dude called again? Dexter Redding. Dexter Redding. He's like 19 or 18 almost. It's unbelievable. I'm serious. Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Two thousand and fifteen Kickstarter challenge. Hey everybody. Hey. Hey everybody. Hi everybody. Hello all. Hello.